Okay, so we're hot on the heels of RTX Super's launch. And by all accounts, there'll be links in the description. It looks like, you know, they're going to basically move the price um, of the existing non-super cards down to the non-founders price and allow AIVs to it probably even a little cheaper than that. Then the super cards are going to come a good 10% stronger or so and slot in at the old price points. And hopefully AIVs won't get too far above that. So effectively you're looking at price drops and 10% stronger cards coming out in the refresh. And this will make some things interesting. It will certainly make the 2060 Super much more competitive with uh, the 5700 non-XT. But I want to put things in perspective just really quickly here. Uh, I, I, I'm about to go to a chart that shows if NVIDIA was pricing their cards roughly where they did in the Fermi through Kepler days, kind of in between, maybe slightly more, slightly more, say, slightly more expensive, slightly more segmented than Fermi, but not even as bad as Kepler. And then correspondingly, where the 5700 XT would be priced as a result. Now, before I get to the chart, though, I really do have to stress this here. And again, links in the description of where you can fact check me. But it costs like $80 to make a 2080 Ti die, and then $120 for the RAM. If it had 12 gigabytes, I'm assuming it did, right? Because um, if it wasn't ultra milking mode right now, they would use 12 gigabytes for the 2080 Ti. And then there's the nice cooler, other components like capacitors and such on the PCB. In reality, the 2080 Ti probably costs about 280 300 bucks to make. And that's being conservative. It probably costs less. But let's say I'm not being conservative and I'm off. Well, if I was off by a factor of two, bringing the price up to a, you know about $560 to make a 2080 Ti, NVIDIA would still have a 114% profit margin on this card right now. That's how bad it is. And they would have room for 10 to 20% profit margins if they were to price this where they should from inflation, you know, compared to the GTX 580, like a $600, maybe slightly more card, they'd still be making 10% or more profits. So let's just put that in perspective. I fact checked how much it costs to make these cards. So this is not some fantastical thing. Yes, even with those massive die sizes, that's how much it would cost to make. Don't forget the GTX 580 was $500. They made good profits on it. Probably cost them like 250 to make that. And that was on a when 40 nanometer really wasn't yielding very well, especially with the Fermi architecture. But anyways, let's get to the chart. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. If you look at where they would normally position this, and I actually struggled with if I should call it the RTX 2080 or 2080 Ti, because honestly, they didn't start bringing out Ti's until they were under immense pressure and trying to milk at the same time. But I'm just going to call it the TI to kind of make my old chart line up well. Remember, they've made the 285, the GTX 285 before. They've made interesting TI cards in way in the past. So it wouldn't be crazy for them to call this a 2080 TI, right? And they did that in the Kepler days too. The full Kepler was uh, a 780 TI. So the 2080 TI, um, even with like, you know, and, I, and we're talking about you know, like 80% profit margins here could have been priced at $600 and been 15% stronger than it was. In fact, the 2080 Super probably still won't be as strong as this hypothetical card. And then as usual, you group them together. So the cut down 2080 Ti is the 2080. That is how it should work. It shouldn't be its own die. And, you know, that would slot in right where you expect an 80 card to be, about 500 bucks. And yeah, it would be... In fact, if they would give it the full 12 gigabytes of RAM, it would be a tad stronger than the 2080 Ti is right now. Again, we're talking about a $500 card that would have been almost a Titan RTX, and they would have had something, you know, a solid, well, a good 5% stronger than the Titan RTX for 600 Moving down the list, the 2070 sometimes was its own die. Sometimes the 70 was a cut down 80 die. But, you know, they have a lot of dies with Turing. So we can assume if they just gave it the full Turing die, which again, the 2080 guys is not a full Turing die. They really could have made this like the normal price you'd expect. Either between three, you know, like 330 to $400 is where the 70s usually would go. 
and it would have been a little stronger than a 2080. You know, we're looking at a good 4K60 card with limited RAM, but who cares? Uh, for under 400 already, that would have forced the 5700 XT to be reasonable. And the 60 Ti is often a cut down version of what's in the 70. Again, we're talking about something that would have been stronger than the 2070 for less money than what the 2060 costs right now. It's very sad. <laughs> and then the 2060, as usual, is a cut-down version of the 106. Well, I'm sorry. It would be the full 106 die. Often, the 60 is a full 106, not cut down. And I threw in the 2060 SE. They've done this before. It could have been the 50 Ti Boost. You know, they've always had some kind of in-between card when there's a lot of competition. And, of course, as I've said a million times and everyone else has said, the 1660 Ti is the 2050 Ti. And that would have been like 140, and that for you know for almost a hundred bucks you get the 20 the 1660 performance. It's it's quite depressing. And and then if you go over to where AMD is, look guys, there would be a 45 percent profit margin even at 300 dollars for the 5700 XT. There would be, and AMD would have been happy to make more profit than usual and still price it competitively at 300. And then of course the RX 5700 is 200 dollars. Now I'm not. You know, doing this to bring up the whole pricing debate. It's just a reality check. So, yeah, there it is. NVIDIA could have kept their massive profit margins and priced a stronger version of the 2080 Ti at $600. It would have been easy. And it would have forced AMD to price their cards accordingly. You know, if you adjust for inflation, I basically priced the 5700 series in that chart based off of what they charge for the HD 6870, which is a very applicable comparison. It's not quite like the 7870 or 7850 where they could charge a premium because they were first to a new node before NVIDIA even had something. This is where it would have been. And just really keep that in mind before you celebrate about with any of these price points. Um, and I'm not telling you to not get Navi. Uh, I think, again, I think the RX 5700, even with its markup, is a good card at 380, better than in the 2060. And if you've been waiting with a 480 and you have the money, yeah, it's worth getting the 5700. But I would stay away from the Super and the 5700 XT for now. Unless you want, like, the special edition or you don't care and you like AMD software. I know I certainly I do. It would take something much more than price performance to bring me to NVIDIA. They would really have to really improve their drivers and add the same features AMD has. But that's been covered in other videos. Well, quick and dirty one. Just a reminder for you guys. I know you like it when I analyze charts and look at the data that way. Tell me what you think in the comments. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. It really helps a lot. And of course, you can talk to me in more detail on Discord if you are a Patreon member. Thank you.